This lesson is for section 4.3. We're going to be solving three variable systems. So now we're introducing to you guys a new unknown, and that unknown we're going to call that z. So here in the very first system that we have, um, this is a pretty basic one because I already give you what z equals. So you're going to see three different equations, and since they already give you what z equals, you can simply plug that back in. Now if you plugged it into the top equation, that wouldn't get you very far because you still have two unknowns there. If x plus y plus 4 equals z, or sorry, 7, that doesn't really let you solve for x or for y because there's still two variables here. So instead, you could plug it into that second line and end up getting x. So we plug in 4 here, we solve and we get x equals 5. Now, of course, I can plug that back in for the x here, and I can plug in the z as well to get y alone. So I have x plus y plus z equals 7, and that gives me 5 plus y plus z, 4, equals 7. So if I subtract that 9 over to the other side, I end up with y equals negative 2. Now when I write my answer, this is called an ordered triple. Instead of an ordered pair, which is what we normally have, you know, for x, y, now it's called an ordered triple, and we're going to write it in terms of x, then y, and then z. So our answer here, since it's an ordered triple, is going to be 5, negative 2, and 4. So that is what we're looking to do now, is just introducing to you guys a third variable. Um, obviously that, that question I started off with a very basic one. In number 2, now you're going to see something that's very different from what you've been doing before with substitution and elimination. So let me have you guys write down these steps first. So go ahead and pause. Uh, can you see it all? No. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and then um, copy all of these steps down. Okay, now that you have those steps um, copied down, I'm going to go through and actually explain how you would do one of these variable systems. So what we want to always do is label our lines. Let's label them A, B, and C. Um, one, this helps me to determine whether or not you're showing the correct work because what happens sometimes is people will forget like a little negative sign and then the rest of the system ends up being very crazy like their answer is way off from what the answer is supposed to be and all they did wrong was maybe have a, like they didn't distribute a negative so if you at least show me what you're trying to do I can give you partial credit for it so we're gonna label each line a B and C now first step says to pick one variable to eliminate from a pair of equations so I look at just a pair of equations, meaning I could look at just the first two lines here, and I want to pick a variable to eliminate. Now, if I want to eliminate a variable and make it easy on myself, I would select the y. Okay? If I select the y to eliminate, all I have to do is add line a plus line b. So that's what I would write and show, that I'm adding line a and line b, and if I do that, I'm going to show the work for it. I end up with this new line here. Okay, so this is the line when you add a and b together, you get x plus 3z equals 18. So we eliminated one of the variables. Now, you're going to next eliminate the same variable that you just chose. So we're going to eliminate the y. Okay, actually let me write this in. I also want you guys to write in what you're trying to eliminate <clears throat> so that I can kind of follow your work a little bit better too. And I think that'll help you to just keep your work organized for yourself as well. So we're trying to eliminate the y. Now, you're going to pick the same variable, the y, in any of the other two equations. So we don't want to use these two equations again together. We could pick these two here, or we could pick this line and this line together. Okay. Now, I would pick b and c instead of a and c, because a and c have the exact same sign in front of that y, so I'd have to change it either by subtracting or multiplying it all throughout by a negative. So instead, I'm going to pick line b, and line C, and I'm going to add together B plus C. Now after adding B and C together, I'm left with this resulting equation here. Now step three says to solve the remaining system. What you're going to do now is solve the system here with the two new equations that you created, because now you only have two variables, and we can easily solve a two variable system. We can use elimination, we can use substitution, we can use whatever we really want here. I'm going to use elimination and subtract this line or multiply by negative one throughout. Okay, so after I applied that um, just elimination, normal elimination here, I get x equals three. Now I want to plug x equals three back into this two variable system here so that I can solve for z. So when I solve for z, 
I end up with z equaling 5. Oops. So now I have two of my unknowns. I've solved for them. So I already know what x and what z is. Now after that, after you've solved your system, you're going to plug in that solution, so 3, 5, we're going to plug that back into one of the original three variable equations because that's going to have the y in it. So I can select any of these. I'm going to choose this one just because I don't have to multiply so many things then. So if I plug it into ne negative x plus y plus z equals 3, then I'm going to substitute the 3 in for x, so negative 3, plus the y is what we're still trying to find plus z, which is 5, should equal 3. So solving for this, if I subtract that 2 over, I get y equals 1. Now my ordered pair becomes 3, 1, 5. And that's the very first system that you've done um, using our three variable system technique. In problem 3, I want to do the same thing. I want to label my lines a, b, and c. Now I'm going to choose to eliminate one of these variables. I could eliminate the x, I could eliminate the y, I could eliminate the z. But I'm going to choose something that I think is a little bit easier to eliminate. I want to choose to eliminate the z because I already see that I have 2z and here I could eliminate that by just multiplying this line, the b line, by 2. So that's what we're going to do on this problem. We're going to eliminate the y, or I'm sorry, the z. Okay, so we're going to take line a and we are going to add 2 times line B because that will eliminate the Z. Okay, now as you can see, I left line A alone. So this is the original line that you're seeing here up above. And on the B line, I multiplied everything by 2. So then I got this resulting system of equation, or I got this resulting equation that only has two variables now in it. So now I'm going to pick two other lines, not the same two lines A and B, but two other pairs of lines. So I could pick B and C, these two, or I could pick A and C, just not B and A again. And then I want to do the same thing. I want to eliminate the Z from those two lines. Now I'm going to choose to eliminate B and C because I already know what 2B is, right? If I multiplied line, line B by 2 again, I can eliminate that, this, these two Z's here. So I'm going to use B, but 2 times B, and C to eliminate the Z. Okay, so now as you can see, I took 2B and I took the line C here and I added them together and now I have two of the same exact variables that I have over here. So now I just created for myself a two variable system that I can go ahead and try to solve. So now I solve this system of equations because this is easy for us at this point. We know how to use substitution or elimination in order to solve this. Okay, so I went ahead and I multiplied the top line by negative 6 and the bottom line by 5 in order to eliminate the y's here. So when I do that and the y's end up getting eliminated, I have negative 29x equaling positive 58. So that means x equals negative 2. Now I take this and I plug it into the system either here, whoops, for the x here or the x here. I don't want to go back to my original three variable system because then I can't solve for either the y or the z. If I plug it back into the two variable system, now I can solve for the y. So I'm going to do it in the bottom line here. 5 times negative 2 plus 6y should equal 26. So when I solve for this, and I subtract or add that, that uh, 10 over, I should get y equals 6. Now with these two ordered pairs here, I can plug it back into the three variable system, any of the equations from the three variable system. Now, you could even plug it into here, even though that's twice the amount of B. You could also plug it into there. I'm going to plug it into line C here, or this original C here. They're the same, but if you go and plug that in, now you'll, you'll be able to solve for the Y. So I take negative 2, I plug that in for the X, I take the 6 and I plug that in for the Y, and now I can solve this very simple linear equation here for the Z. So negative 2 plus 24 plus 2z should equal 16, and I'm going to subtract over the 22, so I have 2z equals negative 6, so z would equal negative 3. My solution then, as an order triple, is negative 2, 6, negative 3. Please go back and replay any of this if this is moving a little too fast. I, I wanted to save some time, and instead of showing all the computation, I just kind of worked out parts of it. So if it went a little too fast, replay it, make sure that it's making perfect sense for you before you go on to number four.
All right, now in problem number four, you can choose to eliminate the x, the y, or the z. Um, probably the easiest thing to eliminate would be the y, since everything is already set up. These two are already set up, and if you chose line B and line C here, you could also just add those two lines together. I'm going to make it a little bit more complex, just so that you guys get a sense of what you should do when you don't see everything nice and matched up like this. Um, so I'm going to eliminate the x. We would get the exact same answer whether or not we chose to eliminate the x, the y, or the z. Um, just some of our calculations might be a little bit more time consuming if I chose to eliminate the x, which is what I'm going to do with you guys here and just kind of pause again and show the work and just explain through stuff. So let's label A, B, and C. And if I want to choose to pick A and B, I'm going to take twice A but make that negative 2A. I'm going to multiply that whole line by negative 2 and add just the normal line for line B in order to eliminate the x. Okay, so as you can see, I have my new um, linear equation in two variables now only because I have eliminated the x. This is now gone. Um, it's really, really important that you make sure that you're super careful with all of your signs. So that's the one thing that people, they, they could get the process down and they could do it well. It's just they would make a really small algebra mistake, whether it was their sign or not multiplying and distributing everything to each part. Um, and then they'd end up with these crazy funky solutions and they'd think that they were doing everything wrong. So please really be careful. Double check, triple check your line and make sure that it's exactly what you're trying to say. If this is supposed to be negative 2 times A, then each one of these things has to be multiplied by negative 2 and your corresponding sh signs are going to have to be um, changed according to you know negative times that, that original number. Alright, so I'm going to work on now um, choosing another two lines to eliminate. And I'm going to choose, just so that we can see what it looks like instead of just B and C again, I'm going to choose A and C, okay? If I chose A and C to eliminate, that means that I need to take 4 times A, but not just 4, negative 4 times A, and add that to C. So when I do that, I should get negative 4X plus 12Y minus 12Z equals positive 16. And then the C line is just going to stay the exact same and make sure that you're showing me on the side of every single line what you're trying to show um, because again if you mess up on just a little sign like let's say you put that as negative 16 the entire solution from here on out is going to be incorrect and I can go back and figure out exactly where you made your mistake and that might result in only like a half a point off as opposed to you know oh my gosh what is this kid doing I have no idea and then taking off more than you know more than just half of a point on your entire um, solution so just be really careful and organize your work kind of like it model exactly what we're doing here because the more organized you are with your work, the easier these problems are for you. Um, anyhow, when I add these together and I eliminate those x's, I get 9y minus 13z equals 35. Now we will put both of these lines together and solve this two variable system. And um, what's nice is that both of these y's are already the same digit, so I'm just going to multiply that whole line by a negative, so that I have negative 9y plus 13z equals negative 35 and then I can simply add these and I'll get 6z equal to negative 12 so z equals negative 2 now I can plug that back in and I can plug it in here or here doesn't matter um, and solve for the y okay so I went ahead and did that and I solved for the y um, I ended up plugging z back into this line here and getting y equals 1 now I take that ordered pair, now that I have two of my unknowns, now that I know two of them, I can plug that back into one of the equations from the original three variable system. I'm going to choose this line here um, because I didn't do anything to it, so it should be pretty, um, you know, the sign should all be right. So I'm going to plug it into this line here and solve for the x. Okay, after solving for x, I end up with x equals 5. My ordered triple now is 5. 1, negative 2. And that is the last system that I'm going to be solving with you guys. We're going to move on to some word problem applications and just do one example so that tomorrow you guys can practice those on your own. Okay, so setting up a word problem is no different than your two variable system. You still want to look for your important information. Um, this problem is actually very similar to a problem that we've already done um, as far as tickets and you know number of tickets sold. This time though we have three different unknowns. So let's go ahead and read the problem. It says a theater group sold a total of 440 tickets for $3,940. So this is important. They're giving you two different totals here. Okay. 
They said each regular ticket was $5, each premium ticket cost $15, and each elite ticket is $25. The number of regular tickets was three times the number of premium tickets and elite tickets combined. How many of each type were sold? So this is the important part here, is to make sure that we're defining our variables according to what they're asking. If they're asking for each type of you know, ticket, then that's what we're going to try to find. So x is going to equal the number of, let's do that as the regular tickets, and y is going to equal the number of premium tickets, and x, or sorry, z will equal the number of um, elite tickets. So now after we've defined our variables, we're going to try to model the situation that they tell us. Now, from the very first sentence here, they tell us that the theater group sold a total of 440 tickets. Okay. Now, if I were to add x plus y plus z, so that's the number of elite, or sorry, regular, plus the number of premium, plus the number of elite, all of those total combined should equal the number of tickets that I was able to sell, which ends up being 440. That's the total that they tell me. So it doesn't have anything to do with this monetary value here. A lot of people will, will mess up that and put 3,940 here, saying that the number of tickets plus, you know, the number of each type of ticket equals a dollar amount, and that's not really what um, is modeled in this situation. We have to include the money amount, but we need to also include, um, you know, that in the cost. So each one of these is told to you already, so it says that the regular ticket costs five dollars. So if I sell each one for five dollars, that would be represented here by five times the number of tickets that I sell. So 5x plus 15y plus 25z should equal a certain amount of money. So this time we're, we're including the money in there, so now we want to use the money amount that they gave us, 3,940. Now for our third equation, We've already used up the first two sentences here, so they must be telling us something else, and they do in the third equation. So I'm going to erase here, and I'm going to highlight the important stuff in the third equation. In the very third equation, they tell us the number of regular tickets was. Now, this is the same as the number of regular tickets is, and I hope by now, after years and years of math, you know that was or is means just equals. Okay? So basically what they're telling you is the number of regular tickets is or equals. Now, x represents the number of regular tickets. So I'm just going to model this just straight up, like translating it into um, math symbols. So x equals, and it says three times the number of premium and elite tickets combined. Okay? So I'm going to take three and multiply that by the number of premium and elite combined. Now, if I took premium and elite alone and I just combined those, I would be adding those two things together. So I'm adding y plus z. So this represents the number of regular tickets equaling three times the number of premium and elite tickets combined. So this would be your three variable system here. The only thing is that this one is not in standard form. When you go to solve something like this, and today we're not solving, we're just setting up the equations. Um, when you go to solve something like this, you would actually want to move the 3z and the negative 3z over and put that into standard form so that you can go ahead and solve your system. Um, but this is how you would originally set up your word problem. All right, what I would like you guys to do, just to get extra practice with this, um, tomorrow I will give you guys an assessment on this. Um, right when you walk in, you know, I'm going to give you basically a problem. It might be one of these exact problems, so make sure you can do 6 and 7 and check with the key. Now, 7 is going to be interesting. You want to make sure you check the key to see why it ends up being the answer that you get, okay? So please go ahead and work on those. Nice job. I'll see you in class tomorrow.